So what I'll do is we'll go through standards. And all these things are also available online. Uh, uh, this is called the third uh, secure coding standard. The head of this organization or kind of community. I think it stands for uh, Cyber uh, Emergency Response Team or something like that. And okay. so uh, once the software security uh, became a very, or uh, was considered to be very important to be uh, considered uh, doing software development process, they formed this kind of organization or community that develops all the standards for different programming uh, languages and on. So if you Google it up, you will come across this. So they have standards now for C, maybe C++, Java, and other uh, kind of languages too. Okay. So we'll only take a very small subset of those standards. So it's a very huge list of standards, and there's a separate book available on this. And they collaborate with the developer. For example, Oracle now kind of owns all the proprietary license for Java. So they collaborated with Oracle and they develop all the standards. So sometimes you can see the name of uh, the developing organization along with it. Okay? All right, so a very simple standard to start with is to detect or prevent an integer overflow in any arithmetic operation you do. Okay? So for example, I write a simple Java program like I have here, I get two integer arguments as input from the user, I add them up, okay, R1 plus R2, where two arguments are input by the user, and I print out the sum. So if I input uh, these two arguments, okay, you will get some unexpected value. You, should, you will expect this to be what? 45 plus 4, so some 49, right? So, but you expect some negative, you see some negative number, and the actual output you get. Why? Because of the overflow. <coughs> Alright? Uh, you know what overflow is from architecture courses? Right? Mm -hmm. Let me just quickly refresh it. Uh, if uh, you take, uh, say, um, uh, 8 bit system, mm -hmm. So 8-bit systems, <laughs> the maximum value, uh, if you allow <coughs> it, um, so the most significant bit is the sign bit, and you really have 7 bits to play with. Okay. Uh, you could go uh, you could go uh, all the way to what? Seven ones. Right? And if I, this is 127 by the way, so if I, and this is a zero, right? The sign bit is zero, so this is plus 127. So if I do a one more and bit and add this, you will get all these things to be Zeros. Zero, and then you get a one, right? This is a carry one. Okay? So if you're running, you see this is a signed integer representation, signed integer representation, you won't see it as 128. It will print it as negative 128 if it's an 8 bit system. So if you are using 8 bits to store a value of a variable, and you are using the most significant bit as a signed bit, you can really use only the remaining 7 bits. Okay? And this is actually for uh, data type of type what? Byte. You know, byte is 8 bit 20, right? Uh, so, which means uh, if you're using the signed, the signed uh, representation, like two of us that. Uh, two's complement. Two's complement, very good. Two's complement representation, this is the range of values you can have for a byte. It's not from 0 to 255, it's from negative 128 to 127, mm -hmm. right? So likewise, uh, if you use a 16-bit system, that's called what? A short. If you have this uh, data type of like short in programming uh, in your program. So you have 8 bits for byte. You have short. You might not have seen that occurred of it. There is something called short. Yes, uh, Java. Uh, then uh, integers take up typically 32 bits. 
So accordingly, you have all this acceptable range of values. So for 8 bits, like what we saw, it is kinetic 128 to 127. Why? It's typically kinetic from the 7 to, to the 7 minus 1 for 8 bits. For 16 bits, it's similarly to the 16 to the 16 minus 1. Okay, that's how we got those, we get those numbers. Okay? And for 32 bits, it's going to be, this is uh, 2 to the power 32, 31, 2 to the power 31 minus 1. Okay, so that's how we get all those ranges of values. The most significant thing is it's a signed bit, so that's why you have 1 less than. So if we have 8 bits, this is 2 to the 7, negative 2 to the 7, 2 to the 7 minus 1, and uh, all these things. Okay? Uh, for long, it's 64 bits, so uh, that's why it's, that's the range, okay? So when you do a math, like for example, as you see here, the acceptable range is um, 2, 1, 4, 7, 4, 8, 3, 6, 4, 8, negative 2, 6, 4, 7, right? So I had what values passed as arguments? 6, 4, 5, and 4, right? So when you add up, you should get 649, but it's an overflow because the maximum allowable positive value is ending with 647. So that's why it's an overflow and you get the other uh, end of the negative sign. Okay? So you don't want this to happen because imagine if you are using some control systems, so it's very important uh, what user inputs you have to process. And if a mischievous user tries to input these numbers and tries to crash a report program, it will be in trouble. Okay, so it's very important to uh, make sure the results of your arithmetic operation are safe. It's also related to software safety. In addition to security, it's also related to safety. You want to make sure that uh, the results of such operations uh, will not crash your system. Okay? So if, if you, instead of doing uh, something like this, what you should do? I use exceptions in Java. Right, so you should catch and try try and catch. Huh? Try catch. Try catch block. You should try to catch. There are different exceptions you can throw, and this is this all these things could be grouped and there was called arithmetic exception. Okay. So for this particular standard, uh, three kinds of solution approaches. So we we'll see one by one. The first is to do a precondition testing. A precondition testing means. Um, you do the math and make sure the result of the math doesn't uh, uh, violate the workflow constraints. Okay? Uh, by the way, the code uh, that we are going to see all the code will assume that the user input is going to be validated. For example, if I, you know, the acceptable acceptable range of inputs is something two something six four eight two two six four seven, right? So these are the acceptable range of integer values. So as I'm assuming the user enters acceptable inputs. So you could say if the user himself enters something large, you're going to get an error right away here. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you want, you are not looking at such uh, inputs. You're looking at inputs which are entered right, but the result of the arithmetic operations are the ones that you want to catch. If there's an error, ex exception that could be uh, thrown. So you may be uh, kind of even surprised. We'll see how complicated, if not complicated, how uh, uh, rigorous you have to watch out for the results of arithmetic operation. And so just saying sum equals r1 plus r2 or sum of two variables, yeah. you have to write a kind of a function method to check the result of the arithmetic operation. So I call here, for example, safe add. Okay. So I'm going to pass safe uh, R1 and R2 to the safe add. And I'm going to check uh, whether it is safe to add these two arguments. Okay? And these are two integers. So I call them as the left argument and the right argument. Because left plus right are two arguments I'm going to add. Okay? So if you look at what I have here, it's basically like a ternary operator if you have in Java, like uh, if, uh, for example, the way it is, is if this is true, Okay, so the way it is, if I turn off one line, it may be more. Is that more visible? Yeah. Right? You can still take notes. So the way it works is there's a condition and there's a question mark, this is syntax. Okay, so this mm -hmm. is a condition. 
and if the condition is true, whatever you follow, uh, follow after this question mark in the executor, if the condition is false, <coughs> whatever follows after this uh, coordinate will be executed. Okay, and of course you have a semi-polar at the end. So this is a kind of syntax for a ternary operator. So I have a condition that checks, uh, so before that, so let's say we have two arg variables, right, left, plus right. So I want to make sure the left plus right is within what? The, the condition. Range of what acceptability is. So I call, there is a built-in static variable in Java called, uh, uh, of this class integer. This integer wrapper class has two static variables. One is min value and the other is max value. So I want to make sure that this falls within this range. It's case sensitive though, so you have to use the right uh, thing. So max value. So how do I check? I cannot do as simple as this. If left plus right is less uh, greater than this mm -hmm. uh, max value or left plus right is less than min value, I cannot do that check. Why? If left plus right is greater than max value, there itself is an overflow, right? Because you are adding two values, isn't it? For example, uh, look at an 8-bit system. If you are adding, say, 120 and a 10, right? 120 is going to be what in binary? Uh, it's going to be, let's make it simple. Uh, let's say what is the nearest value. Uh, let's do 120. Uh, it's going to be 64. Uh, mm -hmm. 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8, so 96 plus 120, right? <coughs> and 10 is going to be something like this. Right? So this is 120 and 10. Right? Because that considers an 8-way system. So if I add it up, I'm going to get what? 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Right? This is 130. Mm -hmm. But this is not 130 for a computer, how it looks like. It's this going to be overflow. Is overflow right? right. This is an no overflow. It's a negative integer now. So the sum is negative 2 probably. Okay. So you are going to check whether negative 2 is greater than your max value. Of course it is not. Right. You may think you are comparing 130 is greater than max value. Right. So your logic of the program cannot be just as it plus left plus right is greater than max or left plus right is less than min. Something like that. Okay. So the way you have to check it, but like I have there, uh, using the right argument, if the right argument is greater than zero, means right argument is positive, right? So whatever you are adding to left, right? So whatever the value of left, you add something positive, right? It's going to only increase the value of the sum, right? Left is something, and you're adding a positive value greater than zero to it, so it's only going to make it more than what it is, left, right? Yeah. So it's going to be uh, like what? So if you look at it, if by doing uh, something like what I have there, you stop the safe code by safe add, but we'll come back and look at the other safe subtract and all those stuff later. Uh, so if left is greater than max minus right, why I do this? I know right is positive, right? Mm -hmm. And max is the maximum acceptable integer value. So max minus right is going to be acceptable. So I'm checking whether left is greater than this. Why? If I bring it to the other side, it's going to be what? Left plus That's right is greater than max. Mm -hmm. So it ensures that I want to check this. Left plus, this is what I want to check. Left plus right is greater than max. But I don't want to do like this because as I said, if I do like this, I may have overflow by adding them. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is I'm checking left is greater than, I send this plus right the opposite side and check like this, max minus right. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be acceptable because max is acceptable, right is also greater than zero, so the difference is going to be acceptable. Similarly, uh, if you look at this, left less than min minus right, and you can get the control to this point if what? Right is less than zero. 
right? Because if right is greater than 0, you are going to do this check. If right is less than 0, you are going to do this check. Why? If less than, if right is less than 0, why you want to do that? By the way, why you want to do this if you want to check for right is greater than 0? I said this you do if you check right greater than 0, right? Mm -hmm. Why you do this? When Should you do left plus right, and right is going to be positive, right? They're going to only increase. So whatever be the value of left, it's going to only keep on, it, it will be more than what it is. So if it is some uh, 20, if you add something positive, it's going to be more than 20. If it's going to be negative 20, you add something positive, it's going to be only more than negative 20. So the only, uh, between the two, the min and max, 